Statistics and Excel, normal distribution heights of baseball players, data example part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you're starting from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. If you do have access to this workbook, we now have six tabs down below. The two green example tabs in essence answer key. The two blue practice tabs having pre-formatted cells in them so you can get down to the heart of the practice problem. The two white blank tabs are where we started with just our data set and a blank workbook so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. This is of course where we will continue at this time. Let's do a recap of what we did in the past. We started out with our blank data over here. We have data related to baseball, so baseball statistics which you can get in different places. If you don't have any data sets you might want to go to Kaggle dot com is one resource and you, there's also a lot of uh, baseball related data that you might be able to pick up to practice with we then uh, sorted this information created a table from it picked up what we wanted from it which are the heights and we pulled the heights over to our blank tab as our starting data point so we could just work with this information we picked up the mean, the standard deviation, the median, the mode. We noted that the mean is similar to the median as well as the mode, which is an indication that our data set is following a bell-shaped type of curve, so might be able to approximate it with a bell curve. So we then plotted the bell curve, figuring out the bottom and top point of our x's, so we can plot out our x's, which are going to be on the you know the x uh, axis here and then we used our uh, norm dot dist function and we also then compared the actual data in a frequency distribution uh, and look at the percent of the total compared that to the normal distribution so that we see this chart so now we can see that they're pretty similar in nature which again is an indication that that bell curve will give us some predictive power. We looked at the difference, which also indicates that there's a fairly small differences that the bell curve will give us some predictive power. So now what we want to do is think about how can we create a, a bell curve with an area type of graph and then think about how we can kind of draw a line so we could see the above part of the bell curve, the below part of the bell curve, and like in between type of questions. So let me show you what I mean here. We, we could ask questions such as, what if uh, P of X is greater than, greater than or equal to, let's say 79 and close that out. Now, in order to plot this, I'm going to, let's, let's actually bring this down here and I'm just gonna say above this X is gonna be uh, 79 or let's actually I'll just keep it where I was I'll just pull this back up what I want to do is make this dynamic so I can change this 79 and it will change this label and we'll also use this label up top so this is our fancy label here I'm going to double click on it and in the front of it I'm going to say equals I'm going to put quotes around this because this is the text all the way from the P to the equal sign I'm going to end that quote so that means it's just going to show up as just uh, the text. Then I'm gonna connect it to with an and, and then this 79, I wanna refer to this cell. You can't see it anymore because it's covered up, but I'm gonna select this 79, put my cursor down here and then up to that cell. So now that 79 is in that cell, so I'm gonna replace it with that D13, which will give me the 79 and make it dynamic. And then I'm gonna say and to connect it again to the last bit of text, quotes, which is that bracket quotes and then close it up so now it's dynamic so I can make this 80 and my title turns to 80 right now if I was to if I was to do that now I'm looking for everything that is uh, above 79 so if I was to go here you would think it would be from here to here and you can highlight that it comes out to uh, uh, 
seven, eight, but I can't do it. I can't do it that way. I can't just sum it up because uh, we need the area under the curve. So if I was to do this, I would have to say one minus the norm dot dist. So I can then say, okay, uh, this is gonna be equal to one minus norm dot dist. And then I can pick up the X, which is going to be this. And then comma, the mean is the 7370. And then comma, the standard deviation 2.3 comma, and it needs to be cumulative, therefore true or one, and close it up and enter. So let's percentify that home tab, number group, percentify, add a couple decimals. So it's close to, to this, but uh, not, well, it's pretty close, but not exactly the same, right? Now, I would like to see that pictorially in a graph. So I'd like to be able to plot that pictorially. So let's also add the Z here. And because the Z is also a common type of reference to indicate how close someone is to that middle point. So it's a great term. And so I'm going to then make this white, black, white, and uh, let's center it. And so the Z is going to be calculated as, we're going to say equals brackets. We're going to pick up each individual X minus the mean and then close up the brackets and divide it by the standard deviation. So it's kind of given us how far out we are, the X is in terms of standard deviation in the, from the mean. <laughs> so let's double click and copy that down. Ah, oh, wait a sec, I can't do that, something is wrong. Something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. What happened? These two numbers need to be absolute referenced. So the ones that are in column D, so I'm gonna put my cursor in D2, F4 on the keyboard, D3, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the Ds, the twos, and the threes, enter, put my cursor back on it, then double click the fill handle, and boom. So then you can see the middle point is at 7370. So between here and here, 73 and 74, that's where you're at that middle point. That's where the Z score would be at, you know, the mean at zero. Okay. So then I'm also going to say this is going to be equal to the uh, uh, this dynamic reference. And now we have this dynamic reference up top and we can plot it as well. Let's make that uh, black, white, and center it. All right, so now let's actually start to build our graph. So I'm gonna build my normal distribution graph using the percentages over here from the norm.dist. I'll put my cursor on the title, control shift down. Make sure you don't pick up the 100 shift up. So we just have our data insert on the left. We're gonna say insert this time an area graph. And so I'm gonna pick this one, drop down area, something like that. So I'll pick that one up. I'll pull that to the right, and then I'm gonna try to try to make this a little bit more fancy. So I'm just gonna remove the title so I can make it kind of as big as I can. And then the, the bottom X is not correct because we wanna start it not at one, but at 64. So I'm gonna go up to my chart design, my data, and then on my X, which is on this side, edit it, and then make, it's a little finicky, so make sure you're picking it up here control shift down don't pick up the total shift up and then enter and so there we have it so it looks like it's picking them up correctly over here so i'm going to say okay so there we have it so that we could see that that middle point is where we would expect at like the 74 and then you've got this kind of normal distribution that looks about